well-vetted seasoned nurses that have been doing nursing and patient care for, you know, 10 years, 15 years, 20 years, 25 years. They say the same thing. They say that ratios are always an issue. Nursing retention is always an issue. Recruitment is always an issue. Burnout is always an issue. And same with patient satisfaction. Those things have continuously been Ooh, an I issue. Go. Hey. I've been working, told them, please don't hit my phone. I'm in my zone, bro. Just leave me alone. Hey. Was on the road, but I swear I'm coming home. Now the drinks on me, I think we need a toast. Hey. See, I did it for me. Now my old friends calling, told them nothing's for free. Told me time is money, dog. Swear I paid all my fees. I was starving for this day, now my fan they can't eat. Hey everyone, before we start the show, a quick word from our sponsor, the American Nurse Association. The ANA is a place we go for all of our nursing education. And today, the ANA is offering 25% off all site items. Save on all online courses, books, workshops, and more. Use code holiday sale 20 when I check out for a discount. But wait, there's more. The ANA is also offering a next level leadership workshop for all current nurse managers and a new nursing manager workshop for all oncoming nurse managers. Make sure you guys click the link in the description to find out more. What's happening, everyone? Welcome to the Cup of Nurses show with your hosts, Peter and Matt. Thank you, everyone, for taking time and tuning in. We really do appreciate that. If you guys find value in this podcast, please give it a share, like, comment, subscribe, give us a five stars. You guys know the drill. That's what expresses our love on the algorithm. It keeps on growing the podcast, the show, and it keeps on motivating us here at the Cup of Nurses to keep up, keep on producing this high quality content. Some housekeeping, cupofnurses.com for any show notes, anything, announcements related to us, what's happening, where we're traveling, it's going to be there. And we are Frontline Warriors club.com for any merch or anything related to consciousness such as blog posts and etc mm -hmm. and we got some cool stuff on uh, youtube as well we're doing debriefments so tune in don't forget to check us out there and then also working on that secret project the the pronto app coming coming really really soon we're going to be innovating the way healthcare takes place yeah exciting stuff man how you doing pete i'm doing great another awesome episode for you nurses out there so today we're going to talk about four issues in, in nursing and healthcare, which is going to be patient ratios, nursing retention and recruitment, nurse satisfaction, and as well as uh, burnout and patient satisfaction. So those are all play a role in kind of healthcare and where nursing is in this current, current time and this current, uh, you could say, standpoint, because I feel like nursing has always had its issues. And when we started uh, nursing, I feel like we had the same issues that we have now. So there hasn't been any kind of change or anything done about these these problems in like the last five to six years. And it's been only five years and it's mm. stressful that we experienced that. Imagine right. nurses that it's been decades and they're still seeing these things or in some circumstances it's getting worse. Mm. Because we've been nurses for roughly a little over, I would say five years now, right? Plus or minus so a little bit. And we see these revolving issues in every hospital that, that we go to. And every nurse that we ask that has been on that unit for a long time, so these well-vetted seasoned nurses that have been doing nursing and patient care for you know 10 years, 15 years, 20 years, 25 years, they say the same thing. They say that ratios are always an issue. Nursing retention is always an issue. Recruitment is always an issue. Burnout is always an issue. And same with patient satisfaction. Those things have continuously been, been an issue. And it's crazy to think about that as nurses, there's about 4 million of us. And we are the, you could say, the biggest cohort in the healthcare sector. And yet it feels like we have the least say in what happens in hospitals and how we tackle these problems that we're, that we're yes. faced with. Yes, yet yeah. we're a majority. Mm -hmm. And it's crazy because these are the problems that nurses are faced with. And yet it doesn't seem like anybody is asking the nurses, what's the solution? Same thing with mm -hmm. all of last year and this year, the pandemic. We were called you know heroes infamously and we were kind of supported so much by everybody last year pictures food being sent thank you so much and i was a little bit i was hopeful that things would change for the better maybe people are going to finally understand things because it exposed healthcare, but it kind of seemed to go back to business as usual mm -hmm. everything's the same 
but now the element got changed. Right. So we're going to continue to do more with less. Yep. It's like That's the, been the mentality. Yeah. You know how they say, hey, this is the new norm. Well, guess what? We're in the new norm of nursing where nurses are still being paid the same. And yet we're expected to do more now. And the crazy thing about it is this whole pay situation is I remember when I was 18 years old, like a decent first level job, you could say pay like $8 an hour, $10 an hour. You got lucky if it was 11 or 12, right? How much did you get paid in UPS? I started at like 1350. Okay. See, that's solid, right? That's like a good starting, starting pay. And usually people that started UPS, they stay there because they, they had a very uh very good base rate you could say and now when you go outside drive by mcdonald's or these fast food joints they're paying up to 20 dollars an hour for somebody to do that so 100%. you see yep so you see those basic jobs get a get an, a giant boost in in their pay scale and yet nurses are still faced with this regular base rate of some nurses get paid like 30 something dollars an hour which is crazy even just thinking about the concept that nurses face so and this kind of ties into like hazard pay that's why they deserved it but like, we had no idea what is going to happen during the pandemic, what this viral threat is, how to take care of it, treat it, yet, yet alone how to protect ourselves. Mm -hmm. We were just gone up and everything. At one point they said masks, we were wearing masks, and it's N95 going back and forth, droplet to uh, N95s because it's airborne. And you put us through all that and we don't even get appreciated for mm -hmm. like fair things that we're asking for. And that's gonna revolutionize health healthcare if we just hit those few points that we need as nurses, and we're gonna talk about them on the show, because yeah, these are the main issues that are affecting us. Yeah, the first main nationwide issue we're gonna bring up is the biggest one, patient ratios. Everywhere you go, patient ratios is always a problem. Matt and I, we've worked in hospitals where they have, where they have unions, and we worked in hospitals where they don't have unions. And we see the drastic difference in patient ratios from a union in California hospital versus a hospital in Illinois where it's non-union based. There is a, a higher, you could say, uh, workplace satisfaction related to a union based hospital versus non-union based because they actually adhere to the guidelines and these mandated ratios strictly. Of course, sometimes there, there are situations where you just, you just can't do it and it is what it is. But when you look at the ratios in California, when we traveled Santa Monica and, and Pasadena, we were always satisfied with those with those ratios. We always got two patients. I, I haven't, we haven't gotten tripled in California at all. I've got tripled so many times in, in, in Chicago or just got doubled that was doubled appropriately. I haven't experienced that, that in California, which is, which is, you know, it's very valuable to have that kind of experience because cause you can look at it and say, hey, how is this hospital able to do this? And uh, why can this not be a national standard? Right. Why has Cali done it for decades? Mm -hmm. Like why? And it also goes into like the workload, right? So safe patient ratios. If you're not getting tripled, like in Cali, you're going you're gonna to have an AIC one CRRT patient that's on the machine that needs continuous hourly eyes and O's versus in Illinois where we were nursed, we are going to have a CRT patient and probably another ICU patient that's mm -hmm. vented and you're juggling that. But here in Cali, that's mandated. ECMOs are one-to-one. -one. Uh, usually hearts are one-to-one -one for the most part everywhere for X amount of hours. In Cali, it could be over 24 hours. They have their like uh, little ratios. And even like med surge, this matters so much because when I worked in Cali, Kaiser, you name it, med surge has five patients to a nurse. That's it. That's a cutoff. Let's just say Telly is four versus when I did med surge in Chicago, I had six patients. That was the standard. It, it starts getting stressful. Like you hear about like the RTs getting called on med surge nurses and people laugh about it. Cause yeah, dude, shit's kind of busy. You don't got time to check up on all your six patients when you're dealing with pay meds and uh, you know, old lady that was sundowning mm -hmm. throughout the whole shift. And then when we got out of ratio, I got a seventh patient two or three times that it happened in my one year because it becomes unsafe, man. I'm just doing tasks. There's no time for holistic care or anything like that. Mm -hmm. So in Cali, that's it. Five is a cap. And that's why this is so important for the satisfaction of patients and also nurses and keeping them in hospitals and keeping us happy, at least that part. Cause we know nursing is already shitty to begin with. Mm -hmm. This point spirals basically into all the other points that we're going to to basically bring up because this is just that important. Patient ratios have always always been a problem. 
doesn't matter how long have you been in nursing, a few years, 20 years, 30 years, like, like we mentioned a little bit ago, the problem is always with patient ratios. Always management always tries to do more with less and that's not how healthcare should be treated because we are dealing with human beings. This is not just like a, you know, a, something that could just be broken down and reused again. It's a human being. If, if there isn't proper ratios leading to unsafe environments, you know, people are going to die and it's ultimately going to impact job satisfaction again and also the, the hospital. So I don't know how, why is this such a hard concept to grasp to these managers or these hospitals that nursing ratios are, are important because it lets us do our job in a better and more efficient manner. I don't, I don't get why that's such a big deal. Like, you know, there is, stats are showing that there is going to be more and more patients in the hospitals, and yet it doesn't seem like management or any healthcare systems are pushing for more and more nurses on unit, which, yeah. which is, doesn't make any kind of sense. Not including the acuity of patients. Mm. Uh, like nurses talk about how these nursing home patients come in and there's so much you take care of, wounds and all this. There's uh, obesity on the rise, diabetes. They're, these patients are getting sicker. Mm. But it's just like you mentioned, the same mentality, more with less. Yep. Another, and, yeah, go ahead. I'll let you run it, bro. Another uh, problem that's faced in nursing and in healthcare is employee retention and, and recruitment. You have high turnover rates, I feel like almost everywhere. Even in these union hospitals, which in California, they seem like they had a pretty high turnover rate too. And they were going, going through people, you know, and that's just kind of how it is universally because yeah, you, ha you have those, those ratios, but now in, for example, California, everything is union based. So now everything is union based. So you can't just sell these, these ratios to these nurses. You have to sell them on a different point because they're mandated already, right? So a lot of nurses are leaving because of hospital politics, because of better employment opp opportunities to other California hospitals because that's the bargaining chip they have. They have one sat satisfied thing, which is the ratios, and now they're also trying to be sold on other aspects, which is, I believe, really good for California because a nurse can focus on, on achieving other things in nursing, not just kind of focus on the day-to-day -day activities of like a unit that's poorly staffed or doesn't have ratios. 100%. Because it's hard, kind of hard to think of like career progression or, it, or it's hard to, even progress, go to school and do these things on like a leadership role if you want to attain that. It's hard to do it when your unit is poorly staffed and you don't have the ratios because it leads to a greater amount of burnout. It leads to a poor out of work environment just because you're so stressed at work. It all spills over to your personal life as well, unfortunately. And this whole retention, it also ties into management. So there's a lot of politics that are involved with things. It depends on what's happening with the hospital. Like some. When I was a nurse, I thought that everything is based around the patient, right? And the more you, the more you do nursing, you kind of realize that everything is based around the business, the money. That that's what it all comes down to. So, with management, I feel like all they care care about is numbers. It's like they treat us like, oh, your barcode scanning is ninety three percent. Like it has to be ninety seven. We have to meet this quota, and everything is always putting us into this like calculated number that they want us to hit like there's just it almost like feels like i'm comparing it to like covid where we lost uh patient interaction they kind of lost that sense with nurses and it's just like you are this replaceable person do this shit hit these numbers scan this chart this make sure this is all aligned while doing everything else just a whole lot man yeah i feel like a lot of people don't also don't know that let's just say you have epic cerner all the charting systems, so the reason why we chart on those systems is because that's how the insurance is built. Build. So if you think about it, you might think of Epic as like this giant charting system. It's really not a giant charting system. It's really a giant payroll for, for how much the hospital charges these insurance companies. And a lot of people kind of think about it that, hey, nurse had, these charting systems are just for charting because we want to make sure that things are done. But Actually, on the inside, it's just a way that the hospitals charge insurance companies, which I feel like a lot of people don't, don't know about that, about the charting systems. That's not necessarily just for charting. It's more of a, of a financial thing, which yeah, is mind-blowing, too. Even what blew my mind in Texas, where we're barcode scanning everything in the supply rooms. Mm -hmm. And you mentioned uh, before the show, we're talking like we they say that it's for supplies and to kind of make sure everything's adequately staffed, but it's more of barcode scanning. So just another thing we could tag and build a patient, essentially. Because I guarantee you it's more efficient for have to hire one person that just does like unit sweeps. Hey, who needs this, who needs that? And they, they, they bring it up. That's how we did it in, 
in, in Illinois. We had we had basically a stock supply room and it would get stocked once a day at least, sometimes twice, depending on if they had enough people. And there was literally people, people coming in, figuring out what we needed to stock and they would get it and they would restock it. And of course, we had like a list in the ICU of our most popular used items. So they would know that, hey, these items are standard. They need to be in, uh, updated day to day. And here in Texas, like you said, we, we're scanning them. Like that's so so inefficient. First of all, it delays time in between getting the stuff and, the, and getting it to the patient because you have to scan. Sometimes it doesn't always scan. You got to scan all the time. So you're just delaying the response time of, of the nurse, which is going to and can potentially decrease patient satisfaction scores and decrease uh, basically the the quickness, I guess, we deliver care because somebody could die within a few seconds. Yeah. If you're there trying to scan the A-line tubing, you know, instead of just already going to deliver the A-line tubing 100%. for the emergency A-line placement, you know? Also, what I'm thinking about, like, retentions and things, wherever we traveled and we noticed there is a void to be filled, a lot of people left, there's a lot of new grads, a lot of preception happening. We've realized that there's leaks and problems in hospital politics, and there's dissatisfaction among the nurses, and... It takes a week or two, but everything just starts coming to life. Mm. And it's like these repetitive things that we kind of talk about, uh, especially with not having time already, ratios, and then you want to put into having bad equipment. Mm. That's another thing across the board, wherever I worked, it's super frustrating always having uh, broken scanners, things out of battery, not being, not having supplies to do my damn job mm. or tubing other units for supplies like it's just a very repetitive thing and i understand that supplies are short or evs or whoever doesn't stock on the weekends that gets short but it happens way too frequently recruitment is another issue i feel like managers have a hard time with and that's basically i guess you could say almost every unit that's because like if you take a manager's perspective you have two options to hire you have either a the new grad which is a, you could say, a long-term invest investment and it also requires a lot of resource dedication because you have to teach this, this, new, this new nurse from scratch. So that devotes a lot of time, lots of resources. And your other option is to get a seasoned nurse that has experience, but then the issue with that, which is hard for managers, is you have to sell them on this position because this, this nurse that's leaving their unit you have to convince them why you should come on this new unit because they're going to be leaving a unit that they're already familiar with, that they're already comfortable with into a new unit with basically an unknown experience because when a nurse leaves a unit, the number one goal is to not end up in a worse unit compared to the unit that they left, yep. right? So that's kind of difficult. So usually you have to sell those people. You could get away with giving a new grad less pay because the new grad is going to be looking for a job actively, right? They want to land that first job and get it, get the experience, get it, get it out of the way compared to a seasoned nurse where you're going to have to pay them more hourly because you have to give them some kind of incentive. And you're also going to have to show them a good work environment as another incentive because a nurse does not want to end up in a worse position than where they started from. That's like, that's like such a drawback and that would, that would, that would break any nurse. And that's why it's important to treat the interview as if the hospital is interviewing you, but it's just as much that you are interviewing the hospital because you want to be part of a good culture. You want to ask the, the nurses, the manager, how things are operated, the diversity, the turnover the, rate, turnover rate, why nurses recently left, is, is the management, what's happening there? Uh, how is the relationship between days and nights, you know? Because mm -hmm. um, that's, that's also another thing I noticed in a unit. I feel like, and this, this happened just last week, where day shift was hopping uh getting on and everybody just kind of crabby and sad like just get some energy like you're already here it already sucks like we, there's no need to like suck the rest of any positive energy out of people because you're crabby and, and you don't want to be here just mm -hmm. you're here for 12 hours knock it out smile just interact you know it creates a good energy to kind of makes you want to work 100 yeah because when we walk into work we're not like you know pissed off we're or always saying what's angry. up how you guys doing you yeah. know laughing it off smiling you know like you know telling people hey i bet you guys are happy that we're here but yeah that kind of stuff there's no reason for you to be, you to be grumpy but i understand you're going to work in the morning but hey it's a little bit different perspective for nights because we're excited because we're leaving so we're super thrilled we're excited we got a little bit of adrenaline going and they're just getting into work so they might be kind of you know uh 
kind of grumpy. But they're there's no reason why you should be, you know? They're sad as shit, man. Yeah. They got a smile. And you got your morning <laughs> coffee, you know? Fucking smile. If you got that coffee, put a smile on. Because, hey, you had enough time to get it. 100%. Mm -hmm. The next issue that we're facing in healthcare is burnout. So if you've heard this numerous times, we podcast about it. And we are emotionally fatigued as a healthcare system. And everything comes and ties into place. You know, uh, burnout stems into two things, which is work environment and working too many hours. And both things were happening. So it's stressful when we have to hold to the same standards, just the scanning medications. You have the meetings because of the HCAP surveys. Um, patients are getting sicker, but the same requirements. And it's like, it's leading to emotional fatigue. And if, if we only staffed adequately, if we only had the proper supplies, like very repetitive things. And I, it's almost like I almost want to like write this out on a piece of paper and give it to the managers. Why don't you do the things differently than uh, other hospitals and see what's going to happen? Why don't why don't they be the face of proper taking the proper way of taking care of nurses? Yeah, because if you don't have a, a good work environment, if you don't have correct ratios, if you don't have happiness, positivity in the workplace, you're not. You, first of all, you're not empowering the nurse to want to do more. And second of all, if it's an ongoing issue, that nurse is going to dread coming into work. And that's the worst thing about about having a job like that is is if you dread coming into work, it's going to be very hard for you to be happy inside of work and outside of work, right? Because it all comes out of satisfaction, especially if you have that unit where everybody just talk shit amongst each other and you're always looking for for support and you're never getting it. It doesn't matter if you work just 36 hours. It doesn't matter if you work twice a week, once a week. That that shift could do enough damage to burn you out for the rest of the week. Just because of this, of these unit politics, the lack of support, lack of ratios, and the expectation of you to always be doing more with less. And that's why nurses get burnt out. They don't have to work overtime to get burnt out. It's just the environment of the workplace that's making them that's burning them out. And that's, yeah. that's sad to see because it's happening on a national level. And if it's not a patient racial issue, it's a burnout issue. And also like emotionally, they understand that they're not being heard, nothing's being done. How does that make you feel where you have to continuously step up to the front line, take care of these sick patients? Uh, and, and as nurses, we're getting smacked from both sides. Patients, bad environment sometimes, long hours, from management, we're getting smacked around too with everything that we mentioned. Doctors can be a whole nother personality. That's that's a, another whole podcast episode about dealing with them. So look at the stress that, that we're dealing with, not including financial stress, uh, pandemic, things that might have happened to you in your, in your family, loved ones passing away. That How can you be clear-headed and have empathy to take care of your patient on a holistic level? if we can't take care of our own body. Mm -hmm. And this is where this burnout's being, you know, everything's just coming full circle. And for all you nurses that work overtime, I don't know how you manage to do it without getting burnt out. I'm not sure how nurses can work five days a week, six days a week, and, and not get burnt out. There's a very select few of these nurses. Majority of nurses that pick up overtime, even like once one shift biweekly, they get burnt out super quick and they start to not, not, be able to manage their personal life. They make this money and they rack up these numbers in their bank account, but yet they pick up so much overtime and yet and yet they're not able to use this money that they that they get because they're burnt out at home. So they're on their days off, they're not even spending this money that they earned. They're not doing these these things that they wanted to do with this overtime money. They're just at home and miserable because they're so drained from work. Or they're working so many hours where they're not exercising. It's a that's affecting them mentally mm -hmm. and physically. They're eating these quick hamburger helper meals or whatever, just eating on the go, McDonald's, whatever you, you want to call it. And they're having brain fog there. So now they're taking longer to recover from working overtime and they don't have any energy to do anything else. Mm -hmm. So take a break. Mm -hmm. And Peter to. and I only work 36 hours a week because if we picked up 48, try to podcast twice a week and do everything we're doing, we would probably just be the corpse. Yeah, we wouldn't be alive. I think I'd probably <laughs> have like heart failure or something like that. But that's crazy. Like, I don't know how nurses do do that. I don't know how they picked up overtime. The longest over, longest stretch of days I've ever worked in a row, it was either six or seven. And that was during during like the beginning of the pandemic when I used to work in Chicago. Just because they were throwing against some like fatty bonuses. Like it was like $500 a 
on top on top of like times like double of what I normally would earn an hour. So I was like, hey, I gotta hop on that. But was excuse me, but was it worth it? Uh, that one time, yeah. But would I do it again? Absolutely not. Because I was literally demolished for like the next like three or four days. Because yeah. imagine working like six, seven nights, and I was working nights too. So imagine doing six, seven nights straight, and then having three days off in a row. Like you're completely dead. Like I was, I was almost a corpse. Like, and plus I tried to work out in between those, which wasn't wasn't a good idea. So I was literally like dead for three days straight. I didn't do anything. Like I didn't even want to leave my like my my room. I don't want to go outside. That's the real burnout. Mm -hmm. And burnout ties into retention. It, it ties into management. And this is why there's this whole epiphany of travel nursing, because I've never heard of it as a nursing student. Mm -hmm. Everybody's leaving because they're just fed up with the way they're being treated. Why, why go to continuous meetings and voicing your opinion, not being heard, and the hospital just treating you like shit, just like that one thing in Chicago about that hospital where they don't want to give letters or recommendations. When did it become just about the hospital and the, uh, the financial retention? So it's wild because as healthcare, you're supposed to be, you're supposed, you're the center and your I ideal thing that you want to satisfy is always supposed to be the patient. Now it's like with these different charting systems with these different things that we have to do in a hospital, it's not patient-centered care. It's more like financially-centered care because you have to be hitting these numbers to make this much money. It's not as much about the patient. It's, hey, we have to do, th do these things because we want to get all these grants from the hospital and you're taking less care. You're taking away direct care that a nurse was able to give to a patient and you're having that nurse leave the room because they have to chart more they have to do these random tasks they have to fill out random paperwork that these hospital makers do and that decreases the you could say the like the communication between a patient and a nurse and it's going to impact the nurse nurse's satisfaction with work and also the patient experience in the hospital because none of them neither one of them are going to give what they're kind of came there to do you know because as a nurse you're you're not really thinking hey i can't wait to chart it's more like, hey, I can't wait to change someone's life. Yeah, I find it ironic how hospitals care about these patient satisfaction surveys. And that is the, that's like the bread and butter. We talk about on monthly meetings about the breakdown of that. Uh, not as much as travelers because we don't intend the, the meetings. Yet, they don't want to invest in nurses, which is 4 million strong. And they're at the forefront that's going to affect directly the patient satisfaction scores. Mm -hmm. Why not invest time and money into that? Mm -hmm. And if they're burnt out, you can't retain them. How how can you expect to have good scores if you? And that's the problem. It's so. Hospitals send out these surveys, and it gets broken down into topics such as nurse communication, doctor communication, responsive of hospital staff, pain management, communication about medicine discharge information and the other two is just the cleanliness and the quietness mm -hmm. so a, a lot what happens is let's just say a patient a unit doesn't have a lot of um, medications being explained to the patient that's a low score management always tries to work around that by one telling us about it that's a problem and then like putting stickers on wows about hey what you know ask about side effects so that's one way of solving things but we just need to invest the time because if we're burnt out, we're overworked, and we have no time because of bad ratios, no lunch breaks, you name it, you, you guys know the, the the issue here. How can we help the patients talk about their pain? How can we sit down with them and talk about their feelings and be empathetic and explain things properly, procedures, making sure they're not stressed out or anxious in the future instead of taking a Xanax? Like, There's just no time for that. And I think that's why nurses are suffering too, not only for those reasons that we talk about, but also not being able to do the care that they were designed to be. You know, we went to school for this. We went to school to care for people. That's our personality trait. We love that. And medicine kind of takes that away because of all this shit that we have to do. And that's like the sad part, mm -hmm. which creates suffering in, in my eyes. Mm -hmm. I feel like communication is always the number one issue on these uh, patient patient surveys. And yet the solution to these to these issues is something that requires you to not be in the, in the room as much. So it, 
uh, they, they add steps for you to do certain tasks, which then decreases the time you spend with the patient. So how are you going to solve that communication issue if you're decreasing the amount of time I spend with the patient? You're never going to going to get those numbers up because guess what? I'm not there with the patient because you you add steps for me to do for certain things. Now you are adding me. Now you now you added a paperwork because some other scores were were wrong on the pixels because for some reason people can keep miscounting things in the pixels. Now you have to double verification with drugs and now we got to find a nurse to double verify this stuff. So you're ultimately decreasing the nurse to patient interaction, which is never going to raise your, your patient satisfaction scores because the thing that patients seem to be deprived most of in hospitals is, is communication. And not only communication regarding education, but communication as in just being there for a patient, just talking to them. Because yes, the patient wants to seek knowledge and be informed of what's going on, but they also want to be asked how they feel about certain things. We, we always give these orders to these Doctors always give orders, nurses always complete these orders, but we never ask the patient if it's okay or how they feel about these orders. Like when you give somebody medication for hypertension, it's just like, hey, how do you feel about being on this medication for the rest of your life? No one ever asks the patients that. And no one even, even thinks about asking that. And guess, guess why? It's because we're too busy doing other shit where we don't have time to think about that. We don't have, have the ability to look at the patient as a, as a true human being from like the mind, body, and soul. We're just stuck on the, on the body part and not able to hit all these pillars, all these tiers that make it the human being. And then you get these low satisfaction scores. Yeah, it's because it's not, patient is not just numbers and nurses aren't just numbers. Their personality is attached to so there's emotions in it. And the less time we spend with patients, the less emotion attachment we, we could have with them. And this is going to drive numbers down because it's just how humans work. It sounds very binary on how to fix these issues. I know there's more to it and it's a multi-factor problem to solve, but it seems very binary as far as fix these issues mm -hmm. and see what happens, invest in nurses, and then we could fix other things. Cause you know, just like I mentioned, the medication or other things that uh, hospitals do, like let's just say there's a collapse season issue. So they start putting things on a wall for reminders. Like that's cool, but why are collapses being done are we uh having lack of equipment are nurses just running through it because of everything else is happening like let's invest in them mm -hmm. yeah why don't we if you want to solve a problem related to nursing why don't why does the management ask the nurses hey what do you think is a good solution because yes i understand there's like little like um what are those things called in like the nursing departments where there's like the Some committees boxes or yeah, like, the, there's like, would, yeah there's like all these little committees like the collapse committee the cardi committee the patient safety committee or whatever there's these committees but i feel like no matter what these committees offer and most of the time they're going to offer a a um it's going to be more support which is going to be better patient ratios that's what all these committees probably advocate for and yet management makes up makes these committees and yet they don't go on the advice of these committees it's, it's like they're they're there just so it seems like you have a voice, but you really don't because the decision is ultimately up to a higher management. Yeah, or if like they try to do these little, I don't, I don't know if, how I want to call it, movements or events to help boost specific scores, but yet they're missing the point of what they're supposed to do. Mm -hmm. So if we, we're having issues where nurses are not spending enough time with them because of the things that we talked about, instead of solving the problem they do like let's just do the sit down for dignity mm. and try to spend 30 minutes with your patients okay that's the goal but do you realize why we're not meeting this goal can we fix the real issue at heart instead of just like putting a satisfaction score to aim for like let's let's do this together it sounds very good on paper but not really good reality yeah you want to end on that note yeah man we just vented about the biggest issues in nursing that a lot of nurses are aware and you're listening and I, we understand your frustration. Hopefully we could all come together in the future and change healthcare for better. And that's, that'd be the goal because ultimately better healthcare starts with nurses, to be honest. Yeah. And I feel like definitely a travel nursing industry. And I feel like even Pronto uh, is going to better empower nurses because what travel nursing and, and our app Pronto offers is a way to see the competition that you have, I guess, for nurses. So you could, you could, the power is in your hands. If you want to leave your, your current unit and your current job, you're going to have the ability to, to leave so with, with Pronto and with travel nursing in general. 
Because Be your own you, boss. Yeah, because if you don't like where you are, guess what? There's a nursing shortage and there's always a nursing shortage. So if you're scared to leave your unit because, oh, I'm not sure if I'm going to find a job, there's a bunch of travel jobs out there. There's a bunch of permanent jobs out there. There's a bunch of local countries out there that, that you can you can take on and just experiment. Like nurses are always scared to leave the unit, but but guess what? When you have five years of experience on one unit and you leave that unit and go somewhere else just to try it out for a year, two years, you're always going to be able to come back because you're always going to be a better investment to your old unit than for your old unit hiring out a new nurse where they have to reinvest the time in. Your old unit is always going to take, take you back because you've already been on that unit for such a long time. So they have a better investment in you. So don't be scared. Just, just empower yourself and just try new things because you know you just don't want to be stuck in a place where you're not happy with. I agree with you, Pete. You guys take care. See you guys next time. Peace out. Peace.